go! Hello today, kids. Now, you know, it feels like, oh, you guys feel like you're in a live studio, like a radio studio. It's pretty exciting, isn't it? Yeah. Those of you watching this at home, this is Mr. Atkins. I'm coming to you live today from 503 8th Street in front of a live studio audience. We have uh, Chem 1 first hour listening to me do this. I'm actually showing it to them. So, with uh, that, we'll go ahead and get started. What we're do doing today is we're looking at uh, something called Carbon-14 Dating. You've probably heard of Carbon-14 Dating. Have you kids heard of Carbon-14 Dating? Have any of you actually dated Carbon-14? Is he a good guy? Is Carbon-14 a dude or a chick? I don't know. So, is it? <coughs> Beautiful lady. So, Carbon-14 Dating, we're not talking about dating like uh, going out with them. Actually, we're talking about uh, finding out how old something is. That's what uh, your vocab word on this is radiocarbon dating. Remember that? So here's how it works. In the atmosphere, there is uh, about uh, <coughs> there's carbon 12, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So you have carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And that carbon in the carbon dioxide can be either carbon 14 or it can be uh, carbon 12. And <coughs> every uh, carbon dioxide molecule is made of one of those two. And most of them are, anybody know what most of them are? Anyone? 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 Bueller. Bueller. No? Nothing? Most of them are carbon-12. Almost all of them are. If you took one trillion carbon dioxide molecules, then all but one of them would be made of carbon-12. And the other one would be carbon-14. So, hardly any carbon-14 exists in the atmosphere, but there is some. It's like 0 0.00000% but there's a certain amount. And so, wh what we're going to do is we're going to see uh, what that does. So, uh, we're going to plant a tree. We're going to call him Bob. Is that what you guys wanted to call him? Bob. We're going to call, call him Bob. Hi, Bob. Sup, Bob? And we're just going to see the, he's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now we're going to pause that for a second, just so we can kind of see this is a tree that's alive. We have this little detector here that measures the carbon-14 in it. And so uh, if we just keep watching, we see uh, as the tree grows, it has all of the carbon-14 that it should have. In other words, it, should ha it has 100% of the carbon-14. There's another bu button here. If you want to actually know what the percent is, it's very, very tiny. You see this number up here, it's about a trillionth of a percent. Tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of carbon-14. But that's such a small number, it's hard to visualize. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the percent that it could have. So uh, basically, of that trillionth of a percent that it could have, it has all of it still there. And so what's going to happen is we're going to let it go, we're going to let it go. You can see we're going to, eventually we're going to kill the tree. And now the tree is dead and it's falling over. Goodbye, Bob. And what happens is that carbon-14, while the tree was alive, was going into and out of the tree, or is going in, you know, it was going into the tree in terms of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis uh, had carbon dioxide being taken, absorbed into the tree constantly, and so that rate remained 100%. But the second the tree dies, photosynthesis stops happening. So new carbon dioxide is not put into the tree anymore. And uh, if you'll recall, carbon-14 undergoes a beta decay process and turns into carbon, uh, into nitrogen-14 over time. And so you can already see up here that the percent, now that he's dead, is starting to go down. And it stopped going down because I paused it, but if we hit play again, we'll see that that continues to go down as the carbon-14 turns into nitrogen-14 over time. And what should happen at the first red line? Pause it here. What does the first line represent? It represents one, everyone, half-life, one half-life. So how much should be left after one half-life? About 50% should be left after one half-life. So if we play it, uh, it doesn't come out exactly like that, but it's close. Uh, one half-life, it has, it's got about six, 
uh, and a half-life is 5,750 5, years. And so, if we just keep playing it and playing it, over time this is going to continue to decay, and after two half-lives you'll have about a quarter of it left. So this line should get close to, to there. <coughs> As it gets to the second half-life, it should end up at about, about where the tip of my arrow is there when it gets to the second half-life. And when it gets to the third half of that should be left, and that worked out pretty well. There you go. So after two half lives, about 25%. After three, it should be half of that again. And so at any point, if we pause it, let's say that we went and uh, so, so we're kind of watching this happen. But let's play it backwards. What if we didn't know what time this tree died? We could actually go in and we could actually measure the percentage of carbon 14 in it. And from that, couldn't you tell? Couldn't you tell with this curve? Couldn't you tell about how long ago it died? You can figure out. Well, if it's about 24, about 25 percent. It must have died about two half lives ago. Or if it's 50 percent, it must have died about one half life ago. And so from this, you can actually figure out how long ago the tree died. And that's uh, what we use this for. We use this radiocarbon dating to figure out how long ago living things died. Now it works for anything that is uh, constantly being uh, carbonated, being kind of given and taking carbon. So obviously plants, plants that photosynthesize, you can use this to d date how long ago they died. What about an animal? Can you date an animal with this? Do animals take new carbon into their body all the time? What do animals eat? food and the food is made out of either other animals or it's made out of plants right so that that's new carbon going into the body all the time so anything that was once alive be it a plant or an animal you can figure out about what uh, how long ago it died using radiocarbon dating however there is a limitation on radiocarbon dating and that is that uh, how long does it take remember with the pennies about how many how long did it take for all the pennies to turn six half-lives for some of you, some of you eight, seven, some eight. So can everyone agree that after about ten half-lives it should all pretty much all be gone, right? Well, if carbon-14 has a half-life of about 5,700 years, then how long should it take for all of it to be gone? Well, ten half-lives it should take about 57,000 years. 57,000 years. So would it be good to use carbon-14 to find out how long ago something died if it's over a million years old? This, the answer is of course no, because 57,000 is less than a million. After all the carbon-14 is done, gone, you can't really use it for dating anymore. So 57,000, 60, 60, 75,000 years is about the, the upper limit on how old we can date things that using carbon 14 once they get older than that you can't really use them anymore and so um <coughs> for older things there are other things that uh things with longer half-lives that you can use uh not carbon 14 but this is nice for humans because all of 57,000 years more than covers all of like modern human history so about anything that humans did we can date pretty well using carbon 14.